Welcome back to the lectures on the quantum mechanics and the elementary or model systems in quantum mechanics. The last lecture was on the power series method to the harmonic oscillator problem and I stopped at the point where we arrived at two recurrence relations, well essentially one, but recurrence relations for two independent coefficients uh, for the solution of the harmonic oscillator differential equation. So, let me recap that in the first two minutes and then continue in this lecture with the solution and the uh, solution to the wave function of the, for the harmonic oscillator. Okay. So, the differential equation that we wanted to solve was d square h by d y square minus 2 y d h by d h by d y plus lambda by alpha minus 1 is equal to 0. This was the differential equation and we proposed the solution that h of y is equal to sum over n 0 to infinity a n y to the n. And if you remember the overall solution that we were looking at for the harmonic oscillator, we had uh, psi as exponential minus y squared by two h of y. This was the equation that this was the solution that we were looking at. Okay. It was basically beta y square, but it does not matter it is minus y square. Okay. Now, the wave function must go to 0 at the boundaries and here the boundary is that y is uh, plus or minus infinite infinity. The nature of this function therefore, should be such that the whole thing goes to 0 for very large values of y. It looks like it does, but if h of y for example, grows faster than exponential of minus y square by 2 growing slower, then psi of y may actually tend to increase. Therefore, it is important for us to see what is h of y. We have obtained a relation for a n, we have obtained a relation for a 2 n in terms of a naught. That was the last line of the last lecture and a 2 n plus 1 in terms of a 1. Therefore, we know that the series that we have h of y n equal to 0 to a to the n a n y to the n. We know what the a n's are and we need to look at a n plus 2 by a n because you see it is either a naught or a 1. So, the series alternates with the coefficients. So, if we take the ratio of this and if this has a certain pattern of convergence slower than that of this, then we have to relook at the h of y and the solution is that we will truncate h of y to finite number of terms and the justification for the truncation is that h of y otherwise will not allow the psi of uh, y to converge to 0. Okay. So, let us look at a n plus 2 by a n. If you recall, the coefficients will be minus lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 n by n plus 1 times n plus 2, which goes as minus 2 by n and goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, coefficients are well behaved, but 
if you look at e to the y square for example, okay, which we can write as 1 plus y square plus y to the 4 by uh, 2 factorial plus etcetera y to the 2 n by n factorial and so on. And if we look at the coefficients uh, a uh, y of n plus 2, uh, y of n, if we take the ratio of the two terms coefficients, coefficients of the power of y to the n plus 2 and coefficients to the uh, multiplying the term y to the n, if you take that ratio, that also is uh, 1 by n by 2 plus 1 and which goes as 2 by n for n going to infinity. Okay. So, there is a problem here that even though h of y is such that the terms uh, as we increase more and more coefficients, as we add more and more coefficients and we write this as a larger and larger series, the convergence property of this is very similar or it is the same as the convergence of e to the y square. And you have seen that if that is the case, this whole thing will actually go as e to the y square by 2 for very large values of y and that is a problem with this not uh, satisfying the boundary conditions. Therefore, it is important for us not to have an infinite series h of y needs to be truncated at some finite value, at some finite number n. Okay. And to truncate that at some finite number n, what it means is that the coefficient a n is not 0, but the coefficient a n plus 2 is equal to 0, is equal to a n plus 4, is equal to etcetera. Therefore, it is important for us to choose the power series in such a way that all terms beyond a certain value of n have 0 coefficients. How do we do that? We do that by looking at the structure of the coefficients. Please remember a to n was written earlier in the last lecture as minus 1 to the power n. Uh, if I remember, it is lambda by alpha minus 1 minus, let me see, it is 2, a 2 n was, yeah, 2 into 2 n minus 2. I think we had this and lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 times 2 n minus 4 and so on till lambda by alpha minus 1 all of this divided by 2 n factorial times a 0. Therefore, what we want to do is to have a certain value of n such that perhaps a 2 n is not 0, but the a 2 n plus 2 will be 0. That will be 0 if one of these leading terms, if this leading term goes to 0 or if we choose lambda by alpha minus 1 to be equal to whatever that follows. Here we are talking about a 2 n. For a 2 n plus 2, this will be lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 times 2 n. That will be the leading term. Therefore, if we set lambda by alpha minus 1 is equal to 2 times 2 n, then you can see that a 2 n plus 2 will be 0 and likewise all the other terms which involve a 2 n plus 2. And so, every term in the power series with n greater than this coefficient will be 0. So, this is a way of truncating the power series to finite values. Okay. What value of n 
n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2, each one will give you one hermite, uh, one h of y. Okay. If we truncate h of y at n equal to 0, which means that is we say a 2 is 0, but a naught is 0, then you have only one coefficient constant a 0. Okay. I have not yet said what is uh, a 2 n plus 1, we will do that in a minute okay, in terms of a 1. Let us assume that we are considering only the even terms in here. Okay. We are considering only the even terms, then the even terms are such that if we let the a 2 to be 0, then only one term a naught, then h of y is simply a constant and that will happen, you see that a 2 will be 0 when n is 0. Therefore, lambda minus by alpha minus 1 is 0, that will give you what is known as a h naught of y which is a constant a naught. Okay. If we truncate this at n equal to 1, then lambda by alpha minus 1 is equal to 2 into 2, 4, which means that we will have a naught, a 2, but not a 4. Therefore, what you will have is h naught y with the leading term a naught, you will have 1 and then you will have plus y square times some coefficient. So, I should not write this as a naught, sorry, it is a naught plus a 2 y square and that is it, a 4 is 0 and all the others are 0. Therefore, this is h 2, h 2 of y. Okay. So, if we consider only the even terms and for the moment we do not worry about the odd terms, we consider only even terms, then we have h naught of y, h 1 of y, each one is a finite, has a finite number of uh, uh, powers of y and each one is obviously a polynomial in y. The first one is of course a constant, the second one is a quadratic in y, the next one h 4 of y will be a quartic one in y and so on. What about the odd coefficients? If we keep a 1 as the only term and want a 3, a 5, etcetera to be 0, then we have the polynomial or we have the h function 1 of y, which will be a 1 of y. If we choose the terms here, I have written a 2 n. So, let me write a 2 n plus 1 here and tell you what that condition is. So, if we write a 2 n plus 1, that is minus 1 to the power n you have lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 into uh, 2 n minus 1 okay, times lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 into 2 n minus 3 times so on till the last term lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 into 1. All of this by 2 n plus 1 factorial times a 1. Therefore, if we leave a 1 not 0, but a 3 we want it to be 0, a 3 has to be chosen by having lambda by alpha minus 1 to be equal to 2. That is the only term, it will not, the others will not be there. Once a 3 is 0, all the other terms are a 5, a 7, etcetera are all 0. So, you have the same thing that lambda by alpha minus 1 minus 2 n. 2 into 2 n okay, ensures that a 2 n is non-zero, but a 2 n plus 2 is 0. So, therefore, the condition is the same whether you are with 2 n or with 2 n plus 1. The corresponding n value should determine this factor. Okay. Therefore, what we have is when we do the truncation, this term, the uh, the, the way function that we wrote down as e to the minus y square by 2 h of y, okay, 
now becomes psi 0 with h 0 of y as one possible solution psi 1 of y with e to the minus y square by 2 h 1 of y and so on. Therefore, what we are doing is that to ensure that the wave functions are uh, do not explode, but they become 0 at the boundaries. We are providing solutions which are solutions obtained by truncating the power series to finite number of terms. The polynomials that you get by doing that are known as Hermite polynomials. Hermite polynomials. Okay. Just to complete this part of it, we should then give the successive terms, namely a2, a4, a6, etc., in terms of a0, which we already know here. Uh, in here, therefore, if we assume a0 to be a constant, some suitably chosen constant, we can immediately calculate a2 by using that condition, namely it is lambda by alpha minus one, okay, times that. After all, lambda by alpha minus 1 is truncated at some value. So, you put that value here and you put get the numerical factors. This will be substituted by whatever n that we chose and then obviously, this will fold beyond a certain point to 0. Okay. So, we know the explicit expressions for a 2, a 4, a 6, etcetera in terms of a naught. The moment we know where to truncate the series because by doing that, we have chosen the value for this in terms of an integer, okay, 2 times an integer or whatever that may be, 2 times twice n or whatever. Okay. Any integer where we choose to truncate it, that integer gets substituted here. Therefore, we have explicitly numerical expression algebraic, but with the numbers for each of the coefficients and without doing explicitly those things, I will write down the solutions that we get as the final result, which you can verify. And it is also one of the background quiz that you can do to convince yourself that that is the answer. Okay. The answer when we do the truncation is the following. h naught of y is 1. We were assumed a naught to be 1. Okay. h 1 of y is 2y. We have chosen a 1 to be 1 again, I guess. Okay, I will I'll leave it, leave a question mark there. h 2 of y is minus 1, you can see that a 2 minus 1 lambda by alpha minus 1 is chosen already and therefore, what you have is 1 minus 2 y square, okay, which is uh, times 2 factorial, times 2 factorial, okay, which gives you 4 y square minus 2. H 3 of y is given by minus 1, 2 times 3 factorial into y minus 2 third y cube, which gives you, there is of course, nothing else which gives you 8 y cube minus 12 y. Okay. So, you can obtain a whole series of them and uh, what is interesting is that uh, h naught, h 2, let me write h 4 and also h 5, I will stop beyond h 5, h 4 is 12 minus 48 y square plus 16 y to the power 4 and h 5 of y is 120 y minus 160 y cube plus 32 y to the power 5 okay. and so on. So, what we have therefore, is uh, even and odd in y, h naught of y even in y plus or minus y is the same, 
h2 of y, 4y squared minus 2. So, h2 of minus y is the same as h2 of y. It is an even function. h4 of y, 12 minus 48y squared plus 16y to the power 4. h4 of minus y is also the same thing. Therefore, all the even n's, not 2, 4, 6, etc., are all even functions in y. All the odd ones, h1 of y is 2y. Therefore, h1 of minus y is minus 2y. Therefore, h of y is minus of h of minus y, which is an odd function. So, this is an odd function. This is an odd function 8y cube minus 12y, 5, 120y, 160y cube, 32y5, 32y5, 32 y 5 is an odd function. Therefore, all the odd ends contain polynomials, which are odd functions of y. What about exponential of minus y square? that is y square by 2, that is an even function. Therefore, you see that the Hermite polynomials give rise to wave function solutions for the harmonic oscillators with odd and even parity alternating between the ends, corresponding to odd n or corresponding to the even n. So, what is the final result? The final result for the harmonic oscillator wave function is that psi naught of y is e to the minus y square by 2. Okay. Psi 1 of y is e to the minus y square by 2 times 2y. Two okay. Psi 2 of y is e to the minus y square by 2 of whatever we had written already 4y square by 2. Now, you can see so on. So, a table of these harmonic oscillator polynomials are uh, given in the lecture set and I would uh, request those of you who are not certain about the solution to substitute the solutions in the differential equation and see that the answer that you get is 0 by choosing the lambda by alpha minus 1 corresponding to that n value. Okay. You will know that. Okay. So, this is the uh, the, the approach here has been, if you recall the last lecture, looking at the Schrodinger equation, we looked at what is called an asymptotic solution or the solution for very large values of the argument, the variable x. x was changed to a dimensionless variable y, because you remember x was the position variable that is the amplitude of the oscillation. So, we removed the uh, physical parameters, the dimensions out of that by redefining the x in terms of y. And then looking at what are called very large solution, very large values of y solutions, which gave us the exponential minus y square by 2 as the asymptotically applicable solution. And then with that, we wanted an arbitrary solution, that is a solution val valid for all arbitrary y values, y small, y large, etcetera. Therefore, we multiplied the asymptotic solution with a functional form called the h of y, which was assumed to be an infinite series. And then we used the convergence argument that this function cannot forever be an infinite series or ever increase for uh, all values of y. We had to truncate that in order to have a meaningful solution. And the truncation led to us a whole series of solutions depending on when we truncate, what, what n value, what integer value we truncate. And therefore, you see that the harmonic oscillator in principle provides an infinite number of solutions, because there is nothing here which tells me that I can, I need to stop at some point. If I stop at that point, that is the value. But there are, depending on where I truncate the n, I have that many uh, different size solutions. So, the solution of the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator problem using uh, the mathematical properties of the differential equations and convergence immediately gives us an infinite number of solutions. But you know that a harmonic oscillator approximation is not really a valid approximation for very large extensions of uh, or very large values of amplitudes. So, these are uh, theoretical. But in practice, when we consider very large values of extensions, we will have to worry about unharmonicity and so on. Uh, otherwise, these are exact solutions obtained for the half k x square 
potential energy problem or the harmonic oscillator energy problem in one dimension. Okay. Now, there are a few mathematical properties that I would like to uh, write down here, but let us uh, uh, pause for a few seconds and then we will come back to writing some of these properties. Okay. So, I shall give the value of n in a minute, but we will also now see that each n, each psi n corresponds to a given energy E. Uh, remember when we set lambda by alpha minus 1 is equal to 2 n for any given value of n, 2 into 2 n we put in, but that was for the coefficient a to the 2 n and therefore, for any Hermite polynomial of order n, it was truncated at that. Okay. So, if we do that, lambda please remember, uh, recall from the previous lecture, lambda is 2 m e mass of the harmonic oscillator by h bar squared and alpha we have just now written that alpha is k alpha is equal to square root of k m by h bar square or square root k m by h bar. So, if we substitute this lambda by alpha is equal to 2 m plus 1, then what you have is 2 m e by h bar square times alpha is 1 by alpha is h bar by square root of k by m and that should be equal to 2 n plus 1. Okay. So, let us cancel out these things and the m becomes the square root m. So, the answer goes over to E is equal to h bar okay, into square root of uh, k by m times n plus a half taking the 2 uh, to cancel out and this is h times 1 by 2 pi into square root of k by m times n plus a half and you know that that is the harmonic oscillator frequency nu and therefore, the energy of the harmonic oscillator is h nu times n plus a half where n is the index associated with the wave function psi n. Okay. So, we have an n plus a half that is very interesting because that is going to give us the idea of what is known as the 0 point energy later on, but uh, this has to be kept in mind therefore, psi n is associated with a given energy E n also indexed by the same n as you have it here. Now, what about the normalization constant? Uh, mathematically one can work this out, but I am only going to write the final answer. It is easy to check these things and verify. Uh, textbooks give you these things over and over again. So, what you have is n is pi by alpha to 1 by 4, 2 to the n by 2, n factorial to 1 half. What exactly is this? Uh, this is the normalization constant such that the psi of n of x psi of n of x dx now is equal to 1 minus infinity to. So, we have to write this psi n of x from whatever is given here this n square and the Hermite polynomial we have to write n by this expression and now we can write therefore, the wave functions psi naught of x is going to be alpha by pi uh, because it is how do I define this yeah. So, I should uh, define this as 1 by n here okay. and uh, if I do that then what do I get? Uh, psi n 1 by n squared psi n of x psi n of x dx is 1 and then we can see that that is uh, given by the corresponding expression. So, and this n is what I have here pi over alpha 
so on. So, psi naught will be alpha by pi because it is 1 over and it is to the 1 by 4 e to the minus alpha x square by 2. Okay. Psi 1 of x is given by 1 by root 2 alpha by pi to the 1 by 4 e to the minus alpha x square by 2 h 1 of root alpha x. Okay. Psi 2 psi 2 of x normalized is given by 1 by 2 root 2 alpha by pi to the 1 by 4 e to the minus alpha x square by 2 h 2 of root alpha x and so on. What is interest, what is important is that 1 psi is an exponential of that is the Gaussian function 2 indexed by the same n by the harmonic oscillator and 3 that the function the argument of the harmonic oscillator is dimensionless and 4 if you remember the integral of psi star psi d x is equal to 1 tells you that the dimension of psi has to be 1 by square root of length because d x is length and you can see that it is alpha to the 1 by 4, alpha is L square dimension, 1 by L square dimension, alpha is 1 by L square dimension. Therefore, alpha to the 1 by 4 is 1 by root L. So, these uh, pointers should be kept in mind that alpha is in the numerator and alpha x square come as a, as a product or root alpha x come as a, uh, as a quantity so that we do not write uh, uh, functions which uh, have difficulty. I mean you cannot interpret those functions. So, those are things of course, you have to worry about these constants because uh, you require the wave functions to be such that they satisfy the probability distribution. But other than that you can see that everywhere it is alpha to the 1 fourth, alpha to the 1 fourth alpha to the 1 fourth and so on. So, you can see that it is 1 by square root of the length which is a one dimensional problem because 1 by square root length, 1 by square root length times length dimensionally it is a number. It is no, no dimensions. Okay. So, these are important. These are things which one has to keep in mind when one is doing this for the first time. After some time of course, physicists have a very nice way of doing these things by removing all these dimensions from the uh, process right in the beginning and writing what are known as reduced variables or dimensionless variables or redefined constants and so on. But you know we are not physicists and what we want to do is to understand the problem of molecular parameters to be interpreted properly. So, it is important to keep track of all these things. Now, in the given, given that I have another 10 to 12 minutes left. Uh, let me summarize some of the properties of the Fermi polynomials. I am just going to give you this for you to verify. Uh, I do not intend deriving these properties here. Okay. In the same way, I did not tell you how we get the normalization constant. There are details of uh, calculations which we can always omit and then th there are other things which we have to remember. And, uh, keep in mind. Okay. So, let me just write down an extremely important relation that the Hermit polynomials satisfy. It is called Hermite polynomial recurrence relations, recursion sorry it is not recurrence relation it is a recursion formula. Recursion formula that is they satisfy this formula namely any Hermite polynomial n plus 1 order of y is connected to the Hermite polynomial of order n and the Hermite polynomial of order n minus 1 y is equal to 0. Okay. This is very important. Okay. It basically it is also a very uh, it's, 
it's worth remembering this relation even though I do not remember it now, I, I just copied it from the paper. But it is worth remembering at least in the first few years and manipulate with them uh, to uh, know that all these polynomials, the Hermite polynomials and the others that we would study soon like the Laguerre polynomials or the spherical harmonics or the Legendre polynomial, all of them have this uh, beautiful what are called recursion relations and also they have very uh, fu fundamental properties. They are all called ortho orthogonal polynomials in that the Hermite polynomials corresponding to different orders or orthogonal to each other with a weight function which we call as the exponential function and so on. So, this is worth remembering and all that you have to remember is this relation and the fact that h naught of y is equal to 1 and h 1 of y is equal to 2 y. Okay? If you remember these two and this, in principle you can get h 2 n plus 1, okay? n is 1 from n minus 1 which is 0, h 0 and n which is h 1. Therefore, if you want to get h 2 of y, you are using n is equal to 1, 1 here, okay? then minus 2 y h 1 of y plus, since it is n is 1, it is 2 h 0 of y is equal to 0 and this we already know is 1. Therefore, it is 2 and we know that h 1 of y is 2 y, 2 y okay? and therefore, this whole thing being 0 implies that h 2 of y is 4 y squared minus 2, which was written down a few minutes ago as uh, uh, arising from the solution of the differential equation. Yes, And in the same way, you can immediately write h 3 y also like n equal to 2. So, if you do that h 3 y is 2 y times h 2 y okay, minus 2 into 2 h 1 y because n is 2 and you can see that immediately that it is 2 y into 4 y squared minus 2 minus 4 into 2 y. So, that gives you 8 y cube minus 12 y. So, this is also something that we wrote down. Okay. So, you can construct all these polynomials just from the first and the second one using this recursion formula is one of the things which is worth remembering. Okay. Another way of remembering the generation of Hermite polynomials is through what is known as a generating function formula, okay, which let me write down. Okay. The h n of y can be generated by this particular form minus 1, this is n minus 1 to the power n e to the y square times d n by d y n on e to the minus y square. Okay. Okay. This is another generating function. Okay. So, if you want h 0 of y, obviously it is 0, there is no derivative and minus 1 raised to 0 is 1, e to the y square, the derivative is uh, since it is 0, it is 1, e to the y square times e to the minus y square is 1. h 1 of y is easy to write down again, h 1 of y is minus 1, e to the y square d by d y of e to the minus y squared, which you know is minus 2 y times e to the minus y squared and this minus and this minus go away and e to the minus y square and y square cancel, you get 2 y. Okay. So, you can generate the whole Hermite polynomials also through successive differentiation of an exponential fun of a Gaussian function and then multiplying by the inverse of that Gaussian function and a sine factor. Okay. So, this is another interesting formula. A lot of these things have been studied for several at least 2, 250 years or more because the Hermite's equation is a, is a fairly old equation studied by Hermite. And orthogonal polynomials are uh, uh, 
uh, very well known in mathematics. They are there are uh, very rich discussions on the second order differential equations and so on. So, uh, I would not elaborate uh, this beyond this point. Our objective was to convince ourselves that we know at least uh, with some degree of confidence we can write down the Hermite polynomials by solving the actual differential equation of the Hermite equation or the uh, originally the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator with the help of the harmonic potential. And uh, we have seen that the wave functions are uh, given by these functional forms. Yes, one last expression that I must write down which is also very, very important is that these functions are orthogonal, Hermite polynomials are orthogonal okay. that is integral minus infinity to plus infinity psi n of x star psi m of x. The star is actually a redundant quantity here because these are all real functions, okay. but in quantum mechanics we always have to remember this because very often if we forget the star it comes out at the most innocuous place as something that we have forgotten and it gives you all kinds of nasty answers. So, keep the star always as star even if you do not use it. Psi n star of x psi m of x dx is delta n m, the normalized for the normalized uh, harmonic oscillator wave functions. So, that is uh, orthonormal And the corresponding expression that you will have is that the n n n m, the normalization constants associated with the Hermite polynomials and minus infinity to plus infinity psi n star is e to the minus alpha x square by 2. And of course, there is this also gives you that. So, it is e to the minus alpha x square h n of root alpha x h m of root alpha x dx and this integral is delta n m. So, this is the orthogonality orthogonality of the Hermite polynomials justifying the term that these are orthogonal polynomials. When n and m are the same that is going to be 1 given these normalization constants and this is known as the weight factor in numerical calculations numerical integrals. Okay. The weight factor weights the Hermite polynomials for different values of x according to the e to the minus alpha x square. Okay. Alpha is a constant associated with the problem. The moment you choose a harmonic oscillator alpha is fixed. The x goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. The exponential alpha minus alpha x square contributes different values to different Hermite uh, value the, the function at different points of x. And therefore, if you have to do this integral numerically, this uh, uh, function comes in as a weight function and a numerical method which uh, calculates uh, integrals using this kind of Hermite functions is also often referred to as a uh, Hermite quadrature. We will not do that here, but when you do numerical work involving these integrals, uh, it is important to remember that that is this quantity. Okay. The exponential minus alpha x square acts as providing the right amount of all, all, it's, all it does is that for very large values of x it contributes so little that the Hermite polynomials you can pretty much neglect. For large values of x exponential of, of minus alpha x square is almost 0 almost close to 0. Therefore, the product is not contributed so much this kills them. So, if you have to do this integral numerically for finite values you are very happy that you have something like this. Uh, the only thing that you want to make sure is that the alpha is reasonably big and therefore, you do not have to calculate the numerical values of these integrals for very large ranges of x which is important when you do computer calculations. Okay. These are some things which you have to keep in mind and uh, in the next lecture what we would do is to look at the functional form more carefully using graphics and also uh, the consequences of the Hermite polynomial and the harmonic oscillator wave function being uh, everywhere that is except for some finite values of x where the polynomials go to 0 uh, the Hermite polynomial there are the roots of the polynomial we call it you know after all it is a it is a power series in x finite power series and therefore, it has uh, for each uh, value of n it has n roots and apart from these n roots 
the polynomial is never 0 and therefore, the wave function is never 0 in the real physical space all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity except for a finite number of points and that leads to a very interesting consequence known as the tunneling or things that we were not very familiar with things which do not exist in classical mechanics and the half uh, factor in the energy is another interesting phenomenon which leads to what is known as the zero point energy. Therefore, these are consequences that as uh, chemists and as uh, spectroscopists we will have to remember and these in the next lecture we will continue. Until then, thank you very much.